The Mayor's Prayer Breakfast is a cherished event in our community, started by Mayor Dick King and carried on by every mayor who followed, including last year when we had a virtual event. Traditions are important. It brings families and community together and provides us memories and inspiration during times of joy and times of sorrow. Over the past year, our City of Independence family and our community have experienced many successes and moments that brought us great joy, but also great tragedy and hours and days of sorrow. I want to begin our celebration today by offering our prayers of comfort for the families and friends of Independence Police Officer Blaise Madrid Evans and Firefighter EMT Chad Savinfield. Our invocation this morning will be offered by Reverend Rachel Griffiths. I'm sorry. I always get her name wrong. Our invocation this morning will be offered by Reverend Rachel Williams Glenn. If you would please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the posting of the colors and the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Wonder working. Awesome God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. We invite you into this space and into this place. We ask, oh God, that you would fill us with love and joy and peace and hope so that when we leave this place, we are excited about being a people in independence who do well for each other, who uplift each other, who work together to make this a place where everybody can live and thrive and be the best that they can be. You are God. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'm very happy today to have Kathy Nelson here to give our keynote address on this year's theme, Teamwork. Teamwork has always been essential to the operation of the city, but the events of the past two years have brought our people and resources together like never before. Our pandemic response and recovery required us to create a whole new game plan that involves city departments, school districts, nonprofit partners, and countless community volunteers. The knowledge we gained, the skills we learned, and the people we met has changed our community for the better. We are stronger together. 
I hope you enjoy this short video featuring just a few of our city employees sharing their thoughts on teamwork. Playing sports can be a great way to pass time, stay active, and make friends as people young and old polish their skills and refine their craft. The dedication and focus that goes into playing sports will improve work ethic and also foster relationships and build character. As organized sports continue to grow in the United States, local youth are encouraged to register for their respective upcoming seasons with their local sports affiliates. As early as I can remember, I know I started volleyball when I was eight. I grew up playing the real football. Then I came to America and started playing American football. I always said I played, uh, played soccer for myself, played baseball for my dad, but like, I loved both. I played baseball, basketball, football, and tennis. I uh, played a little football, played a lot of baseball. I actually played baseball up till I was 57 years old. Tennis, swimming, uh, skiing, downhill skiing, cross country skiing, ice skating in the winter time. My family was always really active and uh, participated in a lot of sports just kind of for fun. My friends were playing sports, I wanted to play, my brothers were playing sports. It was just something that kind of runs in my family, I guess. And being so young and getting into sports, it gives you a, a, a good routine to get into. And really, those are your first really close friends that you have growing up. That's where you learn to be social, that's where you learn to talk to people. Um, I, I think that is what got me out of my shell as a kid. It helped me get to know me, you know, I feel like if you have a better understanding of yourself and you know yourself, you're going to be more likely to succeed. My parents are both um, really good athletes, I mean, athletically talented, they're very competitive. They really inspired us to, you know, do your best and try hard and compete in whatever realm that would be. My career started in sports. I worked for the Kansas City Chiefs in the public relations office. And even as a, you know, being somebody in the office, not, you know, suiting up and getting on the field, I mean, you were still part of the team and you felt like you were really essential to the success or the, or the lack of success of the team, as it were. I mean, I was fortunate to be there during a time where we had a lot of success. If you don't work as a team, your team's not gonna succeed. Everybody, you know, in, in, in my two departments and uh, every, everyone in, in the city, you know, be they uh, a supervisor or, or you know, work, a staff worker, um, everybody, has a, everybody has a position on the team. At 10 years old and at 30 years old, it's the same, you know, you have to, it's that, you need that same chemistry, you need everybody. Teamwork is really about knowing when you, you know, when to take the lead and when to let somebody else uh, take the lead and play a supporting role. You have to learn how to win and lose together and teamwork is a necessity, you know, in any organization. I, just, I don't think that it's possible for an organization or a team to succeed without teamwork. I, I, I truly think that a lot of the core values you learn uh, in sports growing up translate to just about any facet of life. Um, working for the City of Independence is no different. Um, you learn to be re relied upon and to rely on people. You learn to uh, effectively communicate your issues. Um, I think the most successful teams are the ones where each of the individual members has a skill or a talent that they're able to contribute that others don't. And when you bring those together, um, it helps form something more powerful than those individual components. Whether it's sports or doing work here at the city, um, having that open, vulnerable kind of communication that forces you to uh, um, evaluate and look to get better, uh, I think that's the kind of lessons that come out of both winning and losing. Being a part of a team uh, taught me to depend on others um, and not having to do everything on my own. Everyone plays their part and the goal is, is for the team to be successful. Pull, pulling your own weight, knowing where you need to be, knowing your job. Um, 
it's not always being the star. It's not always being the person that's going to get the headlines. It's being the person that's going to do the grunt work. It's going to be the person um, behind the scenes making it all happen, making it work. And of course, in sports, there has to be a winner. There has to be a loser. But I learned in life not to look at it as a loss. I either win or I learn. So when things doesn't go my way, uh, it's not a loss, but more so a learning lesson. So it's, it's almost like back when I was managing baseball and having a team under me. You get to hand down your knowledge uh, to your team and um, you get to interact with them and you get to, uh, to know more, more about them and, and the more comfortable you are with them and they are with you, I think the better the relationship is. We need each other. It's not about I. It's, it's about, right now, uh, I'm a member of the City of Independence, so it's about making the City of Independence look good. I feel like that's sort of the culture very much that we have here at the City of Independence, just you know, within our organization, is that we really believe that our successes are shared, our disappointments are shared, certainly when we have tragedies, which we've unfortunately had, you know, those are shared and celebrations are shared. Yeah, you know, Independence is a very large and diverse community. Uh, and I think that's a, an asset for us, just like a team. Um, I think you want a lot of folks who maybe normally wouldn't come together, um, but they come together around that common cause. There's really a sense of we are all in this together. We have common goals. There's and um, you know we're all striving to make this city the best it can be. It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Kathy Nelson. Kathy first joined the Kansas City Sports Commission in August of 2010 as the Win for KC director then moved into the role of President and CEO of the KC Sports Commission in November of 2011. Prior to joining the Kansas City Sports Commission staff, she was an active volunteer and a member of Win for KC and the KC Sports Commission for over 10 years. She was previously on the Win for KC Advisory Board and has also been involved in the Women's Sports Awards Celebration Committee. Prior to the KC Sports Commission, Nelson served in senior management roles in marketing, sales, and promotions at Time Warner Cable and Metro Sports, and held a number of roles at Fox 4 WDAF-TV in Kansas City, including creative services manager, producer, reporter, and editor. Along her career path, Nelson has received numerous Telly, Emmy, and Cable Television Awards for television production, specifically sports production. She was the first woman to win a regional Emmy for the production of an NFL game in the early 2000s. She attended Truman State University. Nelson continues to be a featured speaker for numerous organizations such as various local city chambers, rotary clubs, universities, and other miscellaneous community events, and I'm sure she'd love to come and speak to your group too. So, In her free time, Kathy volunteers in the community. She is married with two very active daughters who are also very involved in volunteering and participating in their in their community. We have a short video to introduce our guest today, Kathy Nelson. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. The Kansas City Sports Commission and Foundation has promoted our city, state, and region through sports for more than 50 years. From owning and operating events like the Kansas City Triathlon, the Garmin Kansas City Marathon, and the Kansas City Sports Awards, to producing and organizing marquee experiences like the Kansas City Chiefs and Royals World Championship Parades and the upcoming 2023 NFL Draft. The Sports Commission is the dynamic force working behind the scenes to make experiences like these happen. 
now I'm fired up I'm sorry brother, your time's up I see the top and I climb up I came from the asses, I rise up From identifying opportunities, managing the bid process, engaging local partners, recruiting volunteers, and executing the event, the Sports Commission is involved from start to finish. And by collaborating with incredible local and regional partners, the Sports Commission can position Kansas City and our surrounding communities as an attractive city in which to host the largest and most exciting events. We provide a safe and welcoming environment for athletes to compete, for volunteers, volunteers to support and for fans to enjoy while making a positive economic and social impact. We are united through sports. We are inspired by sports. We create connection and community. So, I reach the pinnacle. I don't have time, this is critical. It's time to finish you. I don't care who I just did it to. We are the Kansas City Sports Commission. Well, good morning. What a great, beautiful morning today. My goodness. Um, I'm a golfer, so it's quite um, tempting this afternoon maybe to skip work, so don't tell anyone. <laughs> well, as Mayor shared, my name is Kathy Nelson, and I am a Christian. In our office, we often say, I am an athlete. While this is very true for me, I am also a Christian. My husband Lance and I just celebrated our 27th wedding anniversary this year. And Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. And he certainly knew that my plan to marry Lance was a really good one. At least I think so. Lance might not every day, and that's okay. I attended parochial school from kindergarten to eighth grade at Holy Cross Lutheran Church, located in the Northland. I was a really good student, or so I thought. While cleaning closets just a couple years ago, I stumbled across a box of old stuff and found my seventh grade report card. So you can imagine my excitement to show my husband just really how smart I was at 12 years old. I won't show you all the A's and B's and maybe a C here and there, but I will share, share with you a handwritten note by my teacher. It looks like in the first quarter, I was on track. Kathy's spiritual attitudes are well reflected in her social attitudes. She completes her work on time and for the most part correctly. <laughs> but I did stumble in the third quarter. Kathy sometimes let social aspects of life monopolize her instead of academics. However, a few words of explanation brings her back on track but I'm guessing we could all use guidance once in a while to get back on track. Then something that touched my heart. In the fourth quarter, Kathy's attitudes and habits demonstrate a young Christian girl growing up in a Christian home. And this was so true. My brothers hate when I show this picture. My dad was chair of numerous sports committees and my mom was a teacher both at school and at our church. My brothers had my mom as a teacher. I somehow missed that opportunity. My dad worked at Transworld Airlines for over 40 years and was president of their employees club. He drove our pickup in numerous parades, pulling the TWA wagon, and he was always first to arrive at church to unlock the doors and turn on the lights. Following my mom's time in the classroom, she worked for Western Auto before retiring from Feral Gas. And on the back of that report card was a page for parent comments. My mom stated that I needed improvement when asked if I obeyed promptly and cheerfully. <laughs> I guess maybe I wasn't the perfect child that I had thought, but I wonder how God would mark me now. Do I obey promptly and cheerfully? I would guess most times God would mark me as needs improvement. I was blessed to see Christ through my parents. We never missed church. My dad was tall, quiet, a tall and quiet person. He witnessed really more of giving up his time. And my mom involved us with clowning for Christ. She loves this picture. My mom really was a professional clown, and somewhat kind of still is today. In 1 Corinthians, it does say, we should be fools for Christ. And I think my mom took that literally. 
My mom is also a crier. I see Christ's love through her tears when she says the prayer before our family meals. And we know her tears, why we are praying, are, are about love for our family and love for Christ. I was also an athlete all throughout school. My parents helped and encouraged us to host track meets in our backyard near Worlds of Fun. Our house really became infamous for these track meets. We held competitions from a 50-yard dash to a long jump, and my mom's disliking we also hosted a high jump. We also hosted several swim competitions on our, in our stock tank. Yes, we really did have a livestock stock tank on the back patio that also served as our basketball court. And I am an athlete and I'm also a Christian, so I know when we heard the neighbors say, oh dear Lord, when my dad brought that home, I think they were lifting us up in prayer, right? <laughs> Being the point guard for the Holy Cross Crusaders girls basketball team came with big responsibility. It meant that not only did I need to lead the team on the court, I also led my teammates in prayer before practice and games. And it meant that I had to lead the cheers for the boys games. Remember my dad was the quiet type and after one of our games I overheard my dad telling the principal, if the girls are expected, to play their game and then stay for the boys' games to cheer them on, shouldn't the boys arrive early to cheer for the girls' team? My dad never knew that I heard him tell the principal that. But that following week, the boys' team was on the school bus with us after school, and they arrived early so they could cheer us on. I do wish I was able, and I had told my dad that before he passed, that I had overheard that conversation because I know he was quietly witnessing Christ's love. I attended Winnetonka High School after grade school, then off to college at Truman State, where I was a chemistry major. Sometimes I still think that's so bizarre. And one of my upper level chemistry classes, a professor stated he wasn't sure what to do with the girl scientist. Luckily, another teacher suggested that I might be a great fit for a television and radio career after he had heard me on a local radio station as Chatty Cathy from midnight to 6 a.m. So I switched my major, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. And I'm not sure that I was ever truly listening, but luckily God was in charge of my life. I was fortunate to do an internship at WDAF-TV, and after college, I bumped into Cynthia Smith. Some of you may remember Cynthia, a television news anchor at that time. She remembered me from my internship and said, you should come work for us. There's an opening um, in the newsroom. That was on a Wednesday. I bumped into her. I called the news director, and I started my career on Friday, two days later, at Fox 4. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. In 1999, while working in a television production truck, I met a few people interested in starting a local sports television station. Their goal was to put high school sports on TV, and being a high school athlete, I thought this was fantastic. After praying about it and explaining a pay cut would be just fine to my husband, I left my broadcast career for the glorious world of cable television to help start Metro Sports. I spent 11 incredible years with Metro Sports, then God connected me to an incredible Christian sports enthusiast in 2010. Kevin Gray called and offered me the position and the idea of coming to work for him at the Sports Commission. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. I left my TV career completely I took another pay cut to go work for Kevin at the Sports Commission. And months after I started my new job, Kevin passed away at the age of 51. He left behind a wife that he loved, four beautiful daughters in a city that he was passionate about. And Kevin wrote a letter to each of us on, a staff, on the staff just before he passed. And my note from him says, I am unclear where I am headed other than to say, put me in coach, I'm ready to play. He knew he was going to heaven. He knew he was going to be with Jesus. And I am sure that he is playing on any team that he wants to up there knowing Kevin. I have learned so much along my career journey. Having an athlete mindset 
has helped, but more importantly, having a relationship with God has provided me guidance. From planning the World Series Parade and the Super Bowl Parade for our city, hosting Big 12 basketball, being awarded the NFL Draft, and now focused on bringing the World Cup to Kansas City in 2026, I have had a blessed career for sure. Earlier this year, I was hospitalized. I hadn't felt well for about a week, and my health continued to worsen. Of course, we thought COVID, even though I had none of the symptoms. After a couple doctor visits, a few days with no sleep, and my pain level rising, we headed to the emergency room at the urging of our family physician. I did not have time to be sick. It was April. Our youngest daughter, Hannah, was graduating from college in May. I needed to be in Cleveland for NFL draft meetings. We had materials due for our World Cup bid, and we were still trying to figure out how to bring events back and sports events back during a pandemic. I did not have time to be sick. Upon arrival, I had multiple labs and scans done, and doctors were scurrying in and out of my ER room. I was admitted in critical condition, and my body was shutting down. They frequently pulled my husband out into the hall to talk. I was in a lot of pain and very confused. That evening, my body went into septic shock. I had not heard the word sepsis yet, although my husband had. He was told not to research sepsis as he might panic, and the doctors wanted him involved in health decisions with a clear mind. The internal infection I had started to battle would spread to seven of my organs, and things had started to turn very scary. The next morning, somewhat alert, with my husband by my side, one of the doctors shared they had given me a 30% chance. And I thought, in my optimistic mind, a 30% chance of what? Of eating? I was very hungry. I had been a week without food. It's really difficult now, and I've not shared this story with anyone before, so apologies as I pause once in a while sharing my hospital story. But it's difficult to admit that I didn't seek help soon enough when I started to feel bad. I didn't call the doctor. I thought I would feel better the next day, then the next day, then the next day, and I had waited too long. After missing weeks of emails, phone calls, and meetings during a very busy time in our office, word started to spread that I was in the hospital. That's when I realized how much I'm loved and cared about. My hospital room soon became a floral shop. Medical staff would pass by my room so they could smell for themselves. Some of the nurses thought, oh my gosh, you must be married to one of the Royals players. I'm like, no, I'm old enough to be their mom. <laughs> but I felt and saw Jesus through my caregivers. These people cared for me and they loved me during my time in need. Since I didn't have COVID, doctors and nurses would linger in my room. Some sat and shared stories. Some prayed with me, some prayed for me. And a friend called to check on me. He asked if I had had an epiphany since I was so close to death. I calmly stated, no, not that I was aware of. He shared when people experience a crisis, especially a health crisis, it opens their eyes and they realize there's something about their life that they want to change. He said people will decide to change their career, to mend a severed relationship, or to find Jesus. That conversation really bothered me. It felt really, really heavy to me. I felt like I had missed my chance to have an epiphany. An epiphany is defined as a moment in which you suddenly see or understand something in a new and clear way. Then I realized I didn't need an epiphany as I had peace. I know God as my savior. And I now understand how perfect my eighth grade confirmation Bible verse fits my life. For to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. I thought I was being pretty sneaky in grade school, picking a short verse that was easy to memorize. But now I understand each and every word. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. To live on this earth means to live for Christ. But death will be even better when we will be in the presence of our Lord. I didn't need an epiphany to realize this. I live this. 
Maybe our lives do slightly change when something like sepsis interrupts us. My faith helped to move me forward. Faith and my incredible team of doctors, especially Dr. Roger Maloof, my infectious disease doctor. After being released from the hospital in May, I had weeks of recovery ahead of me. At first, this was a daily visit back to the hospital for labs and scans. I formed a special bond with Dr. Maloof. We talked about everything, about life, about word, work, and about suffering. I shared that I know that God doesn't exempt us from suffering. Suffering is not evidence that there is no God. Jesus works with us on things that are hard, and Jesus hold our hand, holds our hand during difficult times. Dr. Maloof shared that it wasn't my time to die. There must be bigger things for me to do. Bigger things like our daughter's college graduation, which I was able to attend in the rain. <laughs> and jokingly, I said big things like the World Cup. I shared that if Kansas City is selected, then a group of us will travel to Qatar in 2022 to see the World Cup in person as a requirement of being a future host city. He paused and he said, well, I speak very fluent Arabic. Go figure. God placed him in my life, not only because I needed his healing hands, but because I might need a translator. So you can rest assured that if Kansas City is selected to host the 2026 World Cup, I will have my life-saving doctor by my side in Qatar translating our meetings. After my daily appointments with Dr. Maloof changed to weekly and now monthly, we carry on our great conversations and we still talk about challenges. He has the challenge of dealing with COVID and my challenges seem very small compared to this. Dr. Maloof shared, it's not the challenge, but our response to the challenge that defines you. He also shared a quote from Ted Lasso. Taking on a challenge is a lot like riding a horse. If you're comfortable by doing it, you're doing it wrong. I am so blessed with funny doctors and I'm blessed with responses to challenges and a Christian heart that I hope to find me. I wanna leave you with two thoughts. One, pressure is a privilege. This is a saying by Billie Jean King. The pressure of our jobs, the pressure of school, the pressure of being a parent, the pressure of being a mayor. How great is that privilege? And pressure is not only a privilege, but also a blessing. Who would have thought that in 2014 and 2015, we would be asked to play in a World Series parade? The blessing of having that pressure has created lifelong memories for most of us in the room. In 1985, my mom was working at the Western Auto building downtown. She had the perfect office on a top floor that allowed my dad and I to hang my brothers and I out of her office window by our legs to see the craziness of Grand Boulevard down below. In 2015, I carried a portion of my dad's ashes with me in my pocket as our staff, along with the incredible support from the city, executed what I think was a pretty perfect day. My dad, I know, would have been proud. The pressure of being a Christian allows us the privilege to know that we will be home one day with our Heavenly Father, with His loving arms around us. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Even though a few of us planned that route, God had a hand in the safety, the celebration, and for sure the weather that day. And amazingly enough, the pressure of planning a second parade in 2020 when our Chiefs won the Super Bowl, that was a pretty good pressure and privilege moment for me. And maybe I'll have the pressure and the privilege to plan another parade again soon, right? Yes. The number two. The Sports Commission team knows my rule. A two drink maximum at all times in all public places. Nothing good happens after two drinks. But what I hope they also know is that I pray for them at least two times a day. I talk with God daily. Sometimes I talk with him hourly. I am broken. We are all broken. Prayer is an open conversation with our loving Father. Prayer is to the spiritual life what breathing is to the physical body. You can tell the quality of a leader by the people they surround themselves with. I am blessed to be surrounded by a loving family, an incredible staff in a very caring city. The least that I owe them 
is to have a conversation with God twice a day, thanking him for my surroundings. What would it be like if we all prayed twice a day or five times a day, the simple, devoted, intentional words to connect in us and others to God? When our oldest son, Haley, was born, all two pounds and four ounces of her, we stayed for an extended time in the hospital just so she could gain enough weight to go home. A few days after her birth, while she was in the NICU and I was napping in my hospital room, I awoke to my father-in-law standing near my door. He had stopped by to check on me. As he was leaving, he said, thank you. That was it. Thank you. Thank you for making him a grandfather. Isn't that what God wants to hear from us? Thank you. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you for today. Thank you for making me a parent. Thank you for making me a teammate. Thank you for Christ's love. It isn't easy always to offer prayers of thanks, and if you're like me, I'm normally quite stressed when I feel the need to pray. But that day in the hospital, those two words from my father-in-law, Gary, thank you, helped me realize the importance of giving thanks to God for all things good. Every day is a gift from God. You should thank him for it. As Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 states, God will never forget the work you did and the love you shared. Thank you for listening to my story. Thank you to Mayor Weir and to all the elected officials here today for all of the loving work you do. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. That was incredible, beautiful. Thank you. Whew. I don't need much to make me cry. <laughs> now I have to do the really fun part. Um, throughout the year, I have the privilege of recognizing people in our community for exemplary acts by presenting them with a special Mayor's Challenge coin. I have made it part of the mayor's prayer breakfast tradition to present coins to individuals who have risen above the call of duty and had an everlasting positive impact on the city of Independence. Today, I have just one. When I think of the elements of teamwork, several necessary functions and skills come to mind to build a successful team. Leadership, planning, respect, efficiency, talent, and above all, communication. Without clear communication of vision, ideas, and goals, the team becomes disjointed and distracted. Without communication of process, how to run the plays, execution fails. The most valuable players, and often the unsung heroes, are the team members who con consistently and effectively communicate, never losing focus on the ultimate prize. For the City of Independence, that person is Meg Lewis. Meg became the city, city's public information officer in 2017 and has transformed the way we communicate, both internally and externally. She leads a very small staff of four talented professionals who manage all forms of communication for our city. This includes every social media site, the city newsletter, every press release and media advisory, every video, every photo, every graphic, and logistics for every event that the city hosts or sponsors. Meg develops and executes our communication strategy to promote the city of independence, share news with our residents, businesses, and visitors, and convey a positive, professional image for our community. 
She responds to all media requests and coordinates interviews and requests for, requests for information from news outlets across the region. Meg serves on the Regional Association of Public Information Officers, coordinating communication strategies and programs throughout the Metro. She is a critical part of the city's pandemic response team, informing our city staff and our residents about COVID-19 cases, testing sites, vaccination clinics, food distribution, utility assistance, housing assistance, and countless other resources. She ensures that our city continue, continuity of operations is clearly stated and effectively distributed so we can continue to provide critical services to the community we serve. Meg also serves as the staff liaison for our Independence Brand Committee, working with council-appointed volunteers to promote our city brand, a great American story, in meaningful and creative ways that reach all segments of our large and diverse city. Meg and her team work across all city departments and engage with many, many local businesses and organizations to ensure that as independence for all, our voice is one that is trusted, confident, and clear. Meg, I'm honored to present you with the City of Independence coin for your exemplary acts. I am going to welcome back up Reverend Rachel Williams Glenn for the benediction and the retrieval of the co colors, if you would please stand. It's always interesting to follow the mayor. She's taller than me. I have to adjust the mic. Let's pray. Now may the love of God surround us <laughs> <laughs> May the strength of Christ uplift us. May the unity of the Holy Spirit breathe in and through us to bless us, to anoint us, and to empower us to be a blessing to the world and to independence and to Missouri and to the universe and to every space that God allows us to occupy. Now and forever, let everybody say amen. 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 On heels, too, they don't <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Thank you again, Kathy, for gracing us with your presence and your wonderful message this morning. Everybody go out, have a wonderful day. Go get a tea time. <laughs>